So here we go with the popular monthly question answer session with you. Yeah. And you'll be pleased to know not a one question about what's going on on the football pitch. That's good. So yeah. That's the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Good. So here we go. What's the arrangement with the club shop? Do Sports Direct rent it from the club or do they own it outright? It would be great if the club could take ownership of its own shop and engage with a fan base to meet its requirements, says Steve on Facebook. Um, the existing club shop agreement um, is runs parallel with our kit agreement. So we've got the rest of this season and next season where we are linked to that. Um, so there's a number of questions that, that come as a, as a result of that. Um, so we don't own the club shop. Sports Direct own the club shop. Um, it's up, as I said, next year. We are now going through a process in common with the selection process for potentially a new kit manufacturer for the end of the existing contract. That it is, it's an, an, an item on the agenda that do we take the club shop back as well. So it's something that's being discussed. It's, it's on the agenda. Um, we do, as I said, we don't own it, but we get a very substantial royalty fee each year of the current deal from Sports Direct. So they pay us a fantastic guaranteed sum. Should we exceed certain trigger levels, that, that goes up considerably as well. So it's a benefit. So it's a fact, if they sell zero, if from a financial point of view, if, if, if the turnover's zero, we still get a large figure. If we turn over two million pound as a round figure, then we get another substantial figure on top. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, whatever way you look at it, we get money out of that club shop. And it's quite a lot. But at the end of the existing contract with Sondico Stroke Sports Direct, it is, it's under discussion as part of the process that we're going through at the minute. Do we want to take that back in house or is that going to be part of the new deal with a potential new kit supplier at the end of, the, of, of our existing contract? Right, okay. Multiple fans are not getting their pizzas. Why does the Fratton End stroke North Stand never get pizza at half time? How does it get decided? Um, well, the, there should be a relatively even split of, of the pizzas at half time. Um, it's something we are looking at. It's decided pre match. Um, I have been assured that North Stand, Fratton End, South Stand, you know, do, do get, get it. Um, but you know, as if that's been brought to my attention, it's something that we'll bring up pre-match and, and look at a more even distribution. Yeah, it's a random thing, though. It's, yeah, it's a random pre-match decision, yeah. Marl Sampson says, would it be feasible to get another sponsor, i.e. Nike or Adidas, uh, and perhaps we would sell a lot more, and on an addition, more, more selection in the food kiosks? Two, two, two questions. Uh, when you say a sponsor, what you're saying really is a kit manufacturer mm -hmm. um, in regards of Nike and Adidas. Yeah. Um, I would hope companies such as that will be part of the process, um, you know, should we decide to move at the end of the existing contract. Um, definitely like a cross selection of, of different suppliers, but as I've said consistently, when we first come out of administration, one of the primary primary objectives of the trust specifically was that we um, make the kits affordable. Um, you know, Portsmouth's a working class city. You know, there is a general feeling in football that fans are ripped off, you know, with the price of kits. 60 pound for a top, you know, can be, it can be at other clubs, you know, with the great respect, Nike, Adidas, them type of kits. Um, so in, if you're talking specifically about Nike and Adidas, another consideration is we wouldn't necessarily get a bespoke kit so you'd get an off-the-shelf kit with a Pompey badge put on it. Um, but as I said, there's, they are obviously hugely respected and, and good companies. There's, there's something we will look at with them. Um, but again, there's a number of things to take into account. It's the, the actual money that you get from the kit supplier. Um, we, as we're going through a tender process at the minute where we're actually working you know, with, with our own board and members of the trust in saying, look, what are the key objectives in, in choosing a new kit supplier? Uh, potentially a new kit supplier and I'm sure that price of kit is going to be key again especially when you come into kids kits because um, it was important for us that we priced a kids kit around the £20 mark because when kids are going in to buy their kits if if it's £20 and let's say a Manchester United kit is £40 odd pound, then there's always 
going to be the, the temptation that people buy a Pompey kit, you know, if, especially if you're a parent and the kids are quite young. Um, and one of the primary objectives when we first come out of administration was to see the city as is common with previous years, you know, every everyone in, in Pompey kits as much as possible. And to do that, you've got to make it affordable. Mm. So that is a, is a key point of the process. And mm. I think it's a bit, I read the fans want these brands, but you know, I speak to a lot of other fans who say, I don't want to be paying 50, 60 pound for a shirt, you know? Mm. You know, uh, as I I've said before, the, the home kit last year online before Christmas is a Christmas present where well, you could buy it online direct via Sondico for 20 odd pound. That's, that's remarkably cheap, you know, um, and that is, you, so you've got to decide what you actually want, you know, and it's all right for some fans saying, well, I'd rather pay 60 pound and have Nike and Adidas. Well, great, that's, that might be great for you, but you know, sometimes you might have two, three kids, you know, and yourself and you want to buy their way and all of a sudden that 60 pound can be up into the 200 pounds where in comparison to what Sondico are supplying, it could be the low hundreds. So you've got to take all that into account. But yeah, it is, it is on the agenda and something that we're looking at. And more selection in food kiosks, quickly? More selection in food kiosks, centre plate, you know, one of the most widely respected and highly regarded um, kiosk operators throughout the country. Um, we do talk to them, but we're very, very limited for space with our existing kiosks. We did, um, when we first come out of administration, we undertook a survey of all our kiosks and really all that our existing kiosk space and Fratton Park can cater for is 11,000 fans. And as you know, we're getting significantly more than that. So it, it's a struggle serving them. The more items you put on the agenda, the more people are gonna be queuing up on match days because there's just so much choice there. So what it's, it's the pipe, you know, stack it high, sell it, you know, as quickly as you can model that they work to because that's the space that we've got here. Okay, on to players. Will on Instagram says, will you be looking at offering new contracts to players soon? Um, we're trying to be consistent in, in what we do um, in regards to the players. And, you know, the manager is aware of that and agrees with that. There may be one or two exceptional circumstances that I won't obviously you know, go into, but fans could work that one out if, there, if we was looking at extending current contracts. But what you've got to be careful of is setting a precedent so i.e. if we offered X player now and said you've got a year's extension at the end of your current deal, then within a day I'd have other players knocking on my door saying, um, well, where's my contract extension? And then if they're not part of the manager's plans for next season, you run the risk of alienating them very early in the season, which is what you can cannot afford to do. Right, okay. For away days, can Luckets do pick up points, e.g. haven't or should you still not just flatten, says Deck on Instagram? Um, first time I've ever been asked that question. Um, it's something if, and as, as I say to, to anyone looking at this, you know, if they send an email to yourself, Johnny, um, it's people think by putting it on Twitter, Facebook, and that you know, it's we haven't got the the personnel to to monitor them and and act upon them by way of either a question or a complaint. So I'd always ask that you put them type of questions in an email. Um, so that we can deal with it. You, I guarantee you, you will get a reply. You know, we have a 48 hour, 48 working hour turnaround where we guarantee a reply. Um, so if that that type of question can be put on an email, but you know, on, on camera now to you, um, it's something that I haven't been asked officially, but it's something that we will speak to Luckets and see if it can be made available. Lovely. Gus on Facebook, will we be trying to get a bigger ticket allocation at Lake Norian? Yes, the answer is no. Tried and failed. Mm. Went back. Asked for a larger ticket application um, allocation and was told that no, we couldn't couldn't have them. Again, it, it's always we go over this, you know, quite quite a lot throughout the season. It's I never get after clubs that don't give us extra tickets because they've got their own existing season ticket holders and they have to balance up the loyalty that they give to their season ticket holders. Pretty much the same as what we would. If, as an example, we had a particular game that another team wanted 4,000 tickets, you know, as a club, you might think, what, rub your hands and go, brilliant, 4,000 tickets, but I don't think I'd be very popular if I said to half the North Stand, as an example, sorry, you're gonna to have to move for this game, um, you know, to make way for away fans. I'm sure there'd be quite a backlash. So you've got to look at it on their side and that's what the, the dilemma they'll be going through. Yeah. People are getting hurt in the crowd during warm-ups when the players are shooting. Why don't you make the nets higher behind the goals? 
Sam on Instagram. Um, we are, as from tomorrow, um, putting in bigger nets to, to see if, if that can alleviate a problem. It's a problem I see at pretty much every game that I go to away from home. You know, we're no, we're no different. Actually, I'd argue, you know, from a health and safety perspective, we're, we're pretty good in that we have it on the big screen. We have it over the tan eye. We have signs around the ground saying to be careful of flying balls and that, you know, so. But saying that, we have an obligation to make it as safe a place as possible. And we appreciate that in the lead up to, to uh to the game during the warm-up, people are not necessarily concentrating on the pitch like they would do in a normal game and their head may be turned and a flying ball could unfortunately hit them. So um, as from tomorrow, we are putting some extensions on the nets up. Bradley on Instagram says, will the new training kit be available to buy online or more more to the point, when will the new training kit be available to buy online? Um, I can't off the top of my head. I don't know the exact dates, but as soon as the new stock arrives, um, if, again, if that particular, what was the name of the person there? Um, uh, Bradley. If Bradley sends sends an email, um, or we find out and put it on Facebook in reply to that specific question, we can get it out there. But yes, it will be going for sale online when the new stock comes in. Given the potential knock-on effect of league on league performance, is a Pompey Cup run worth the extra revenue it'll bring? Says Snozzy on Twitter. I think Paul's identified his priorities in regards of cup runs. Um, and, and that is the FA Cup. He's, from what I gather, he's aiming to field a strong team in the FA Cup because in the other ones, you have to play a lot of games really before you get to a point where you earn any significant amount of money. Um, in terms of the FA Cup, you can have two, what could be two lucrative games even in round one and two, and then potentially a very, very lucrative game in the third round where you, you draw a top premiership club, you know? so. Um, that's the one he's identified. Um, in regards of the FA Cup and the potential revenue you could get out of a third round meeting against you know, one of the top premiership clubs, it, it, it's a game changer in reserve of, in, in, in regards of what that can give you financially to then put back in the team. And you know, we've got this commitment where we want to put as much as we can back into the playing squad. Paul knows that. So that's sort of the roll of the dice that he's going to take with the FA Cup. Billy on Twitter, there are still a lot of big names on the free agent list. Will we be looking to get a few more players in? Possibly. Um, Paul knows what money he's got available left to spend. Um, and that obviously runs up to the January transfer window now where, you know, we can't, unless they're a free agent, we can't get anyone in on loan or, or bring any players in, you know, uh, other than, than free agents. So Paul knows what he's got to spend. If there's anyone out there that he feels will strengthen the squad, I'm sure he'll do it. So it's not, we're not barring it, if, it's just if Paul wants to do it or not. Right, now you did the miles last night again, clocked the miles up. Went to Norwich, down at Norwich. fantastic, yeah, yeah. People are starting to get confused on what cups we're playing in these days and <laughs> differentiating between the different cups. So yeah. explain what this was and um, how it panned out. What it was at the start of the season, we was, as you know, Paul decided not to enter the reserve team league this year. But we had an invite to go into what's called the Premier League Cup. Um, and basically it's predominantly under 23s and you can play, I think, four or five overage players. So Paul, working with the academy, said, look, I think this is a really, really good competition to enter. Was, you know, it's a, initially a two-game qualifying round. If we then go through, you've got six games, three at home, three at, and away against um, Category 1. Cup, so we've got Everton, Wolves and um, Norwich. Um, last night we played at Carrow Road, it was a great experience for the lads. Um, nine of the players that started were from, had come through our academy which was great. Norwich fielded what I understand was a very, very strong team and we battled out a fantastic nil-nil draw, away draw in a, in a league sort of environment, not just a knockout competition. So that, that's a good point for the start of us. and. Um, I think it's saying that, you know, we've got the three home games we're having at Haven and Waterlooville. We'll confirm all the dates in the next few days. And, it, and again, I'd urge possibly fans that are not looking to go to the Checker Trade Trophy um, to get behind this competition.